Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Haya Toys Godzilla King of the Monsters Godzilla, which all the recent Godzillas are kind of the same. I know they're not exactly the same, but they're very similar, so some of you might not even be able to tell the difference. I can't without having them side by side because I haven't studied the, the lizard that much. I'm just not into the monsters enough, but this one is a new release. Uh, from Haya Toys. Uh, I guess you could argue that it is a competitor to the SH Monster Arts releases, though it comes in at about 50 bucks as opposed to the usual over $100. Much more limited articulation. Maybe not the same level of finish, though that's arguable. And it's probably a little bit bigger. So it's definitely a trade off, and we're just going to go through it. They do provide these as review samples for me because I don't collect them. Uh, but they want you guys to see them and I review them honestly. I have said plenty of Haya products have not been good, but plenty of them have been very good. So I'm always just going to be honest no matter who provides what. All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy off the stand and take a closer look. All right, so as I mentioned, they did provide this as a review sample, but I can say whatever I want and I'm going to do that right off the bat. It's terrible. No, I'm joking. We don't know yet. I haven't looked at it that close. Let's see. It stands... Roughly, let's do it this way so that I, I can actually see. It's about 18 and a half centimeters. And that's going to be dependent on how you have him posed, of course. That's going to put him roughly at, we'll call it seven and a quarter inches, probably closer to seven and three eighths in this pose. Here he is up against good old Marvel Legends Darwin. He stands at least an inch taller than Darwin, I would say. And so that's some size. And like I said, if you're comparing this to SH Monster Arts, these guys win in size for sure. They definitely win in price point, but is there enough here to make you want to have it? My personal opinion, just me personally, I don't collect either line. I have reviewed both as review samples. Some have been good from both lines. Some have been bad from both lines. I think bang for your buck, this is probably the way to go. Just throwing it out there because the price points are so high from SH Monster Arts and they're still just big fat lizard monsters that can't pose all that well. That's just my personal opinion, but like I said, I'm not really into the monster verse as much, so you guys might have your own thoughts on that, which is the question of the day. How do you guys feel about these two companies competing for this size, even though this one's significantly bigger than what they normally release? Let me know how you guys feel about that. Okay, for the aesthetic. Lots of sculpted detail throughout, lizard skin everywhere. And so that's good. The sculpt is sharp enough. It is an organic creature. So I wouldn't expect too much as far as like a really harsh, sharp sculpt. So that's good. Let's just zoom in on the head. Let's see what we're looking at here. They got the eye in there, the teeth. I do think they could have done a little bit more to bring out the eye, which isn't necessarily a realistic thing, but this is a toy after all. And it's kind of hard to spot the eye, so maybe just like a little extra black around it or a little bit of extra white on the eye. Something to just bring it to life just a little bit would have been nice, though this is probably reasonable. Uh, same thing with the teeth. They are quite similar in color to the uh, rest of the mouth, but they are there. Again, maybe a, just a touch more white. Obviously, he wouldn't have bright pearly whites, but you know what I mean? Something to bring it to life would be nice. But the mouth is done really well. There's lots of sculpt work inside. Let me turn the head a little bit so you can see. The tongue is articulated as is the jaw and it's pretty well sculpted in there. So I like that. It is a sharp sculpt where it needs to be. So good on them for that. The rest is all just lizard skin basically and spikes. Uh, so plenty of good sculpt work as far as paint. Definitely some washes and some dry brushing techniques, though it looks like more wash than anything. Different colors of washes is kind of what it looks like. I've seen some browns, some beiges, and then it's probably just molded in that greenish gray, grayish, dark gray, green. Yeah, with a lot of washes, I think. I don't even see any dry brushing, but you could have dry brushing and then a wash on top that kind of just feathers it in, so it's hard to say for sure. But I'd say it's enough to bring him to life. Let's zoom in on the side. It does give him some nice depth. You can see at the little top of those spikes there the beige wash in the recesses. Check out the tail. Yeah, it all looks pretty consistent. It's not perfect as a wash never is, but looks pretty good. And I will just briefly touch on the difference between a wash and a dry brush. I realize not everybody who's watching this is a uh, uh, technically oriented person. They might not know how to paint an action figure. And so I should probably clarify that. Somebody mentioned it in one of my videos the other day. A wash is, uh, let's just say for, Brevity, it's a, it's a very watered down paint that just 
pools in the recesses of the sculpt. That's why you see the beige in the low spots around the dark grayish green. All right, and if you were gonna dry brush it, it would be paint that has been mostly removed from the brush. So there's just a little bit of almost dry paint on the brush that gets brushed over the top uh, of the sculpt so that it only hits the high spots. That would be for highlighting. A wash would be more so for low lighting, more so for detailing though, not really for low lights because uh, it doesn't work quite the same way. Uh, anyway, a dry brush would be brushed over top and the paint is almost dry as it is applied and it only hits the high spots. I don't think this guy has any of that. Okay, so yeah, it looks pretty good. Good details in the head, good enough sculpt, good enough paint. Uh, for the 50 bucks at this size with this articulation and that paint job, I'm gonna say it gets an eight out of 10 for the aesthetic. Now, as far as accessories go, you get nothing. Zero out of 10 for accessories. I don't, don't, don't think you really need much for him other than a blast effect, but it seems most companies don't wanna give us that. Okay, so articulation. This guy has a little bit more than I thought he would have, though still not all that much in terms of actual functionality. As you saw, the jaw does open and the tongue does move. So that's very nice, works well. For the head, we have a few different segments. I'll just show you, there's ball pegs in there and it moves around. It doesn't move around a ton. Getting his head perfectly up flat like he's swimming doesn't really work. He can look up, but it doesn't go perfectly flat. Like I would expect his head to go, like you can force it to do it, but it doesn't want to stay and you get a gap down here, so. And then as far as going down, that's as far as it can go down, which isn't nothing. Like that's a decent amount of range, but I think they could have gotten more out of it considering it's just ball pegs with hollow pieces of hollow rings of plastic. So he doesn't have a ton of range, but it's probably gonna be enough. Like I said, it's Godzilla. It's not exactly the most nimble of guys, so that's okay. Shoulders, feels like a ball peg because there is rotation in every direction. You're not getting a ton of range out of him though. As far as going up and back, that's it. I mean, you can obviously rotate up, but no farther range as far as the pivot goes. Rotation obviously goes all the way around. Then you can bring him down. So he's posable, but just not that posable. All right. Then for the elbows, you get a swivel hinge. So it swivels at the bicep. That's your bicep swivel. Straighten out the arm and bend the arm to about 90 degrees. Wrists are on little ball pegs. Pretty limited range there. Okay. Uh, for the torso, it's just this cut right here. Problem with almost every Godzilla figure, probably all of them. The, f the spikes, they're not really spikes though, are they? They're more like spiky fins. They get in the way. He does have a, I think it's a ball peg. There's a little wiggle, but mostly just a little bit of rotation. Can it lean forward? I don't know how to grab it without hurting myself. That's what she said? Ugh. Yeah, okay, so it does have a little bit, a little bit of play forward and back, and maybe you could force a little bit more out of it. I can't really feel any leaning either. Pretty limited there. For the hips, basically the same thing as the shoulders. It feels like just a big old ball peg in there, but because of the sculpt, it's significantly more limited. You're not gonna be doing a whole lot with his hips, all right? For the knees, I can't tell. I think they're ball pegs, just like the Monster Arts figure. His are pretty loose though, honestly. So he's you might have a little bit of trouble in certain spots on his knees, not having great rigidity. You might need to kind of straighten those legs out more. I guess it doesn't really matter because he's on his tail. He's pretty, pretty back heavy, but yeah, you're not getting a lot of range out of any of these leg joints at all. Uh, ankles, same thing, ball peg, very limited range. It's there, it's not super loose or anything, but it's very, very limited. And then lastly for the tail, we have some segments. It's like every two, every two panels up to here, then it's like three, I don't know, two fat ones, different size panels. It's pretty well segmented. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine joints in his tail. So let's see how much we can bend it. Just going to the side with reckless abandon. I got pretty good curve out of it. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, all right, that's better than I thought. Good job, Haya. I wasn't expecting it to get that much range and granted it's not that much range, but it looks pretty good doing it. Granted, his tail design does lend itself to being articulated. It's not like we're talking about Frieza, but yeah, pretty good range. That's out to the side going up. 
And I'm guessing I don't have to be too fearful of posing this guy because it is just ball pegs in there. It does curve up pretty well. He's happy to see you. And then if you want to just kind of straighten it out, obviously that should be no problem. But is it no problem? Should be. Yeah, you can straighten it out. A little bit of weirdness right here, it looks like. But that's just to have the, the sculpt. Okay, so it's a little floppy in between where it's holding itself tight. When you force it into a pose, it's fine. But in the, in the middle, it's kind of loose. So... I guess be aware of that. But yeah, it poses pretty well, I guess. So for 50 bucks, I think it's perfectly fine. The articulation is quite limited though. So I'm only gonna say it's a five out of 10 for posability, but it's reasonable. So it's a reasonable five out of 10. You can decide if you agree with that or not, but to me, it seems all right. Okay, so final verdict on this thing. I think it is a wonderful alternative to the SH Monster Arts. If you wanna spend less, you're definitely doing that. You're getting more plastic and a reasonable arrangement of articulation. Nothing impressive, let me be clear, except the tail is pretty good. He's not gonna pose a lot, but he does pose, he's pretty big, and he's pretty cheap compared to the next closest counterpart. Not even counting NECA's stuff because they don't have those licenses anymore, so can't do it, but it's pretty darn good. I'm gonna give this guy an overall rating of, well, for 50 bucks, that's not bad at all. I'm gonna say eight out of 10. I wanna say the articulation should be better, but really at 50 bucks at this size, I mean, it's really just two Marvel Legends worth of money and they're garbage. <laughs> so this seems perfectly reasonable for 50 bucks. Yeah, I think Haya has a winner right here. So there it is, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you should. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.